Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Allie Wilkins. So today we're gonna be talking about sacred wealth, which I have written a book about. <laughs> Shameless self-plug. So sacred wealth, what is sacred wealth? What does that mean? As you know, we are shifting in consciousness on a massive scale that has never occurred before in the history of time. Our relationship with money and wealth in the past 2000 years specifically has been one that's only been a physical experience. Do I have the money or do I not? And that correlates to how wealthy you are, to how successful you are. And all of that is really shifting and changing. And so the first thing that I wanna ask you is, what does wealth mean to you? And this is likely a definition that will change over time. And some, it's a great question to tune into quite often. What does wealth mean to me? Wealth as a society, I think the collective view or what the systems would like us to think is that wealth equals the money that you have in the bank. It equals your net worth. It equals the money that you bring in from your income or from inheritance or from whatever, wherever you might get money from. Your wealth equals the money that you have. The problem with that is that a lot of people, even when, first of all, we can become slaves to money and then when we get the money, it's like, I don't feel that different. Why am I still worried about losing this money? So for example, someone could have $10 million in the bank and not feel rich because they're like, God, now I have so much to lose. Like this is something that happens so often. You've probably heard people who you would consider to be very wealthy on the news or on media channels or social media talking about how they thought that money was gonna bring them all this happiness and it didn't. And it has nothing to do with the money. Money is a neutral energy. It has to do with our relationship to ourself and our relationship to life itself. We have to redefine wealth because wealth isn't just about the money that you have in the bank. You could have a zillion, you could be a billionaire but never have time to see your children. You could think about someone who's a really, really high powered CEO and they have a lot of responsibility and they're making a ton of money, but they have no time for themselves, for self care, to see their family, to go on vacation. Like there's not ever a vacation without having your phone out, answering and responding to emails. Their phone is ringing constantly. They can't be present with you ever because they're engaged in work 24 seven. Is that wealth? Because their bank account would tell you that it is wealth. But what about the quality of life? What about time? And I remember sitting at um, one of my first jobs, like as a young, outside of college, I, I worked from a young age, but my first big girl job. And I just went to work after a few weeks and I was like, ew, is this what I'm supposed to do for the rest of my life? And I like asked people around me, adults, people who are older than me and they're like, yeah, that's what being an adult is. It's not so bad. Just, you just suck it up. And then when you retire, it's fine. And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, but I don't, I don't want this. I, I am clear that I don't want that. That sounds horrible. And I started to see examples of people who had a lot, who had created time freedom and financial freedom. And I started thinking, why do I have to ask per <laughs> the famous example I use is it was at this new job. I'd been there for a few weeks and Beyonce was coming to town at the concert. She was coming to Tampa. I was living in Orlando at the time. And I really wanted to go to this concert. It was on a Wednesday night and the concert started at like seven or something. So I would have had to leave work early, but I had just started this new job. So, you know, it's not really a good look to be like, hey, can I leave work like four hours early so I can go to the Beyonce concert? But this is actually a really big moment for me because I was like, why do I have to ask permission to do something that like I am so joyously excited for? And I was, I remember sending the email and asking my boss and I was like, if he turns this down, like I'm going to freak out. <laughs> but there was a huge chance that he could, like I had no idea how he would respond. And he let, he let me go 
not fired me. He allowed me to go to the concert. And I just was the whole situation. I was like, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous that I have to ask permission to do something like this. And for you, it might be asking permission to, to go to the gynecologist, to take time off to do that. It might be asking permission to take time off for your child's soccer game or, or play. Somebody must be talking about me because my nose is itching. <laughs> anyway, um, so I was not into that. I was like, what? This whole, this whole thing is not right. And it really started things moving in me and, and, so I started to realize how important time freedom was and how for me, something that was incredibly important was that I didn't want to have to ask permission for anything from anybody. I didn't want to have to ask permission. So this was a huge moment for me of realization. There was a lot of other little pieces to this throughout the years, but the point is I started to think wealth to me also includes time freedom. It's not just about money. It's not just about money. And so for you looking at what is true wealth really mean to me? What would a tr like my most ideal day? And this is such a lame question, but it's a good question. Sometimes it can actually be hard to go into this because we have no idea. So the question is, how would you spend an ideal day? I remember like literally in 2015 going through these questions. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I have never seen anybody who doesn't have a job unless they're 18 or, but even then all my friends had jobs. Like, I don't really know that many people who just have all this free time to do whatever they want. So it actually took me years to really be able to get into that question and to really feel into like, what would I do? So you have to think for yourself, what is really important to you? What is included in your formula of wealth? So that's one big part of this conversation of sacred wealth. Like step one, what does wealth even mean to me? So step one, what does wealth actually mean to you? What does that look like for you? And allowing that definition to change over time. And the next thing is wealth, like how, first of all, most of you have already asked yourself this question. How do you feel about money? Like these are, this is the basic stuff. How, what's our story with money? What's our, what's our relationship to money? What's our trauma with money? And I go through this in some of the beginning parts of this book and the root chakra section, like what is our actual experience of money itself and how do we, how have we related to money in the past? This is so vital. You could do this work a million times and keep finding new things. And all of these things that we find in those money stories and ancestral wounds and trauma related to money and how it was spent and the things that happened to you because of money or didn't happen for you because of money. <clears throat> These things are shaping our entire life, our entire definitely financial experience, but also so much more than that. And so it's really important to get clear on that as well. But sacred wealth, I think, ultimately is a consciousness where we feel wealthy regardless of what's going on in our bank account. Like that's really the crux of it. We feel wealthy. So what does it take for us to feel wealthy? there are layers and layers and layers to our relationship with abundance and wealth and how how deeply we allow ourselves to feel it. So a lot of this work, you will, you will find that it takes a while for you to really realize like how deeply you are actually holding it. And so how can you feel wealthy in any situation? When you have $4 in the bank, do you feel wealthy or do you feel super poor? Because here's the thing, if you don't feel wealthy, you're not going to feel wealthy when you actually have a lot of physical money that might show, show you that you're wealthy. You're not going to experience it and you're just going to want more and it won't ever be enough. And we stay in these same cycles. And so how do we get to the root of it and shift how we feel regardless of what is going on? So that's another aspect of sacred wealth. The other aspect that I think um, taps into our responsibility. And I have a whole course about this called divinely funded. That's about how do we, how do we work for God basically? <laughs> like not as a priest or in the church, like nothing related to that. <laughs> how do we be funded through goddess, through God by creating a life based on our soul mission, based on our soul blueprint, not of the programming of the world around us. 
So when we're looking at this from a space of responsibility and leadership, when I have more money, I'm actually capable of doing a lot of good in the world. So there's a lot of us that have wounding around people with a lot of money hurting us, manipulating us, taking advantage. I mean, this is like a basic colonizer wound, right? A, a large country coming in, stealing what someone has or hurting other people because they have more money and so they're able to. So a lot of us have a wound that we don't want to show up with that sort of power because we don't want to hurt other people. This is all so subconscious. You probably don't have these thoughts on a conscious level unless you've already done a lot of work related to your financial consciousness. So these are some of the things we have to look at, but we can, when we show up as a leader in relation to money, how does that shift how we spend our money? Whether you have an extra $5 a month or an extra $500,000 a month, how, what are you doing with your money? How are you spending it? What are the companies you're investing in? Are you saying that you care about animals, but you're buying shampoo that isn't cruelty free because it's cheaper? And I understand sometimes there are sacrifices that have to be made if you have a certain amount of money in your bank account, but how can you do the most with what you have? Because a lot of times there's this like cop out of where we're playing victim and we're like, oh, I want this, all this stuff to change in the world. Well, we do that through how we spend our money. We change the world with how we spend our money. If you want there to be less plastic products, start buying more products that are in glass. Start buying from companies that specifically give back to the charities or causes that you care about. Start buying from companies that are, I will only buy from companies that are cruelty free for my makeup, beauty products, because I know that me spending an extra $3 on the shampoo that's cruelty free informs the other shampoo companies oh, there's more demand for cruelty-free. I think that we should start making our products cruelty-free too. Then, before you know it, every shampoo is cruelty-free. Change made in the world from how I chose to spend money on my $15 shampoo or $10 shampoo or $200 shampoo if you're a designer shampoo girl. Like, <laughs> we make great change with, how we, with the companies that we choose to invest in. And now there are so many smaller companies that are coming out that need our support. A really great example of this is juices, green juices. So um, a lot of green juices come in plastic bottles. And it's like this, something about this doesn't feel right to me. First of all, the plastic is polluting the green juice when it's in a hot truck, even if it's refrigerated, like the BPA might be leaching into your green juice. But also, like, how many green juice bottles are you throwing away per day? You're trying to be healthier, but I would assume if you're trying to be healthier, there's also some sort of, like, environmental awareness. So all of these individual juice bottles are being thrown into a dumpster. They're not ever really recycled because recycling is sort of, like, not actually really a thing. Um, it's, a mar it's a marketing tactic. And so we're throwing all these plastic bottles away. What would happen if you bought the glass bottle and then you could actually reuse it for a long time or glass is much more likely to be recycled than plastic. So could you invest in the glass bottle or what are you doing? So just as an example, this is something that I do. Um, sometimes I'll get the little shooters, you know, like green, like ginger shooters or something and they come in plastic. I never buy those ones. I buy the glass ones because my choice to buy the one company on the shelf that has glass shooters that cost $150 more, even if I don't have that much extra money to spend, I'll get one of those instead of two of the other. Because I'm conscious that this company, if it does better, the other companies are going to start saying, why are more people buying this company and less buying ours? This is leadership consciousness. This is sacred wealth. How can we circulate our money in a way that reflects our values, that reflects our soul blueprint. So what I was going to say also about the glass shooters is I actually keep them. And you know, there's like a hoarding element to this. So I'm working on that, but <laughs> I'll keep like two or three of them at a time. But what I do with them is I use them for herbs. I put little herbs in water in my 
kitchen and I just have these cute little glass shooters and they're actually kind of cute. Or like if I'm, um, what's it called? When you like cut the node of a plant near re, you're gonna like let the stem, let the roots grow out. You know what I'm talking about? Um, I'll put them in that. Or in my, in my jar, the glass jars that I use, instead of throwing them away, I use them. And I'll make oils or something and put them in the glass jars or I'll use them as a vase or, and so you can feel into like how you want to do this for yourself. But looking at how am I showing up in leadership with my money? How am I showing up in leadership with how I receive money? Here's a big one. I did a whole podcast with my friend Jacqueline. Her handle is at Luxembabe. Um, it was called Sacred Wealth, but mostly I asked the question like, are you a prostitute? Because... <laughs> A lot of us would say, okay, what is a prostitute? Which by the way, that word a long time ago meant something very different and very sacred. Um, now, if you think, if you ask somebody on the street, what's a prostitute? You would probably say it's someone who sells themselves for money. Okay, well, we're all doing that. So what is worth it to you to sell, sell yourself for? How are you receiving your money? Is it in alignment with your values? Is it in alignment with what you're here for? This isn't negating money itself because we do need money in order to do our work. We need to be divinely funded. That's why I created the course Divinely Funded. Because we get to be paid well for doing our work, for doing our soul mission work. And not everyone's soul missions will be a business, like a lot of people's won't. However, we can always get paid for our gifts. So the last thing that I would ask you to sit with in relationship to sacred wealth is really just how am I receiving my money and earning money? And how is money coming into me? And is it clean? If it doesn't align with you, then it's not clean. The way that you earn money is extremely important for the cleanliness of your energetic field. Okay, there's like a lot of little nuggets in here that I put in about sacred wealth. Um, but what I really want you to tune into, what does a wealthy life mean to you? What do, what feels wealthy to you and what doesn't feel wealthy to you. So like stress probably doesn't feel wealthy to you. So you would actually become wealthier, wealthier immediately when you shift your relationship to stress. I am being God, goddess to honest. What's that phrase? I'm being so truthful when I say like I hardly experience stress anymore because it's a stress is a choice. And that's like so annoying to hear when you're really stressed out. <laughs> I totally get that. But stress is 1000% a choice. So often we're being stressed out about things that like, we just, we can choose to not be because being stressed about it isn't gonna make a difference. Being stressed about it isn't gonna create this delusion. And I think sometimes that we have this like twisted thinking that, oh, well, if I'm stressed out about it, then like the prop, it, I need to be stressed. Why? Why? So that's just one example. If being peace is important for you and your wealth formula, which probably it is, how can you create more peace in your life right now, starting with your own mental habits, starting with your own behavior, starting creating boundaries, boundaries for yourself in relation to the amount of stress that you allow in your life and in, the relation, in relation to the chaos and how you respond to things. This is a huge thing. And then eventually, 20 years from now, you're going to be like, whoa, my experience of, or five years from now, or three years from now, this builds over time. But eventually you will be like, oh my goddess, I am like, so wealthy, so wealthy. So anyway, this is sacred wealth. So this book is great for you or for a gift. I know that we're coming into the holidays. A lot of people have gotten this for people as gifts. So this is a really great resource for you to learn how to first of all get for like address your financial experience from a from an energetic perspective of your body of your chakra system particularly we start at the root end at the crown so we're going to start on a more physical level and work our way up so that you are creating a, a wealthy energetic system in your body this is an energetic experience and it's also a workbook, like I said. So what I start with, um, there's a teaching, there's, there's a bunch of different teachings for each chakra system. 
And then there are spaces here. So it's, you can see that this book is pretty big, but it's because it's a workbook. So it's not like it's, you know, it's not like it's all text or something. There's um, space for you to write stuff in. So you have to write stuff in this. Like if you're going to get this, like commit to writing in it, commit to doing the work because you can read it, but then nothing's going to happen. How many other books have you read that you don't embody? Also, if you have read this book already, please leave a review because the people who have read this have had such a beautiful experience of the book. Like I'm just like blown away with the reviews and they're just so beautiful. So if you um, have read it, please leave a review on the Amazon page because it will help other people find it. It will help people understand if it's a, if it's the right book for them and like make it honest. I'm not asking for you to be like, you know, please be honest. Um, and also the, um, the course I mentioned divinely funded is on my website, aliewilkins.com. It's a self-study course. Now, um, the first course was launched live. So you'll see everything there and you can look at the website to see what the course is actually about. But that's a great resource if you're ready to go on a deeper level of this of really like, okay, how do I get paid for my soul work though? And how do I develop that relationship with the higher realm and with the lower realms as well that I can be know that I'm fully supported in that as I go through my own ascension journey? So please let me know what your thoughts are about this video if you enjoyed it. If you had any big ahas, what your definition of wealth is, I would really love to hear that. If you can please, please, please put that in the comments. Please also like the video if you enjoyed it. All of this stuff like really helps the algorithm, helps me find more people that this information can benefit and support because I'm sharing all this for free. So I want as many people to see it as possible. Just like real talk. <laughs> um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you have a beautiful day and go spend some time thinking about what is your definition of wealth and also go order the book. <laughs> okay. Bye guys.